So a very interesting problem here and what we have is two charges on the x-axis, one of plus one coulomb and another of minus three coulomb and they're named Q1 and Q2 and they are 10 centimeter apart. Now the question is, can a charge, an unknown charge, it could be positive or negative, be placed on the x-axis so that the net force due to Q1 and Q2 is zero on it. So let's examine various places where the charge can be placed on the x-axis and see what are the consequent forces on that charge due to Q1 and Q2. So first off, let's say we put it in between Q1 and Q2 and let's say the charge is positive. Then we can see if it's positive, it'll get attracted by minus three coulombs but repelled by plus one coulomb. So there is no equilibrium. If it is negative, we can again see it'll get attracted by plus one coulomb and repelled by minus three coulomb. So again, no equilibrium. So let's see what happens if we put the charge on the right hand side of minus three micro coulomb. And let's say it's a positive charge. So we know minus three micro coulomb would pull the charge in its direction and plus one micro coulomb being farther away and smaller than minus three micro coulomb will not be able to repel it. So again, there'll be no equilibrium. And if let us say it was a minus charge placed over here, then minus three micro coulomb would tend to repel it and plus one micro coulomb will not be able to attract it one because it is smaller in value than minus three micro coulomb and also farther. So again, you will not have any equilibrium on this side of the line as well. So that leaves us with the left hand side of charge Q1 and let us see if equilibrium is possible over there. So if the charge in question over here was positive, what will happen is it will get repelled by plus one micro coulomb, but then minus three micro coulomb might be big enough to attract it. So an equilibrium is possible. And if the charge is negative, it can get pulled by plus one micro coulomb and minus three micro coulomb being far enough might not be able to repel it if it is properly placed. So this looks like the region where there can be an equilibrium for a particle of any charge. And as we solve the problem, as we go ahead, you'll realize that it's not really important to assume whether the charge is negative or positive. So let's say the charge in question is Q3. And if we assume it is at a distance L0 from Q1, and let us say 10 centimeter is, let's put it in alphabet terms as L centimeter, then we can say that the force on Q3 due to Q1, the absolute value is K times Q3 times Q1 divided by L0 square and the absolute value of force on Q3 due to Q2 would be K times Q3 into Q2 divided by L plus L naught whole square. Now these are the absolute values of the forces on Q3 on account of Q1 and Q2. And if you subtract this, if you take the difference, it should equal zero. And you would now realize that it doesn't really matter what is the sign of Q3 because it tends to cancel off. So with this equation, if you simplify it, L plus L naught upon L naught whole square is equal to Q2 upon Q1, or rather the absolute value of Q2 upon Q1. And this is equal to minus three upon plus one, which is equal to three. Or we can say that L plus L naught upon L naught is equal to under root three or L naught is equal to L upon under root three minus one. And if you put the value of L as equal to 10 centimeter, what you get is this equals 10 upon root three minus one which equals about 14 centimeters. So if you place a charge Q3 at a distance of 14 centimeters from plus one microcoulomb charge or Q1, the net force on this charge 
would be zero and it would be irrespective of whether the charge is positive or negative.